Welcome back, everybody. It's the PM Show featuring the Minettis, Larry and Nancy. And our guest, Phyllis Davis, is on the line right now. We're going to get to her in just a second. But, Tomas, where did you get this music? Is this, is this Magnum P.I. music? Love American style. Oh, this oh, is Love, love American. Uh, yeah. Love Boat. Edge, oh, that's, I knew it sounded familiar, Tomas. Phil, Phyllis will know what this is. Phyllis knows exactly what this is. And so without further ado, Phyllis Davis, how are you doing today? Hi, fine. Hi, Phyllis. Hi, Phyllis. Hi. <laughs> how are you, sweetie pie? I'm just fine. Good, thanks. How are you? I'm great. Good. Thanks for being on with us. Thank you. Get ready for a bumpy ride, baby. Oh, uh -oh. Manetti. All right, here it comes. <laughs> you know, Phyllis, I want to start from the beginning, if it's all right with you. Uh, you know, you come from Texas. And, yeah. And, and I want to know how you got interested in acting and where and when you started. Well, it was better than where I was born. I was born in a mortuary. So <laughs> I either had to be a mortician or come to Los Angeles. That would drive me right to acting. <laughs> it did. So you, it did. so when you say you were born in a mortuary, you mean you lived above it? Yeah. You, yeah, you really did. Your parents had that, right? Yeah, they they had mortuaries. So we the first one we lived above the mortuary. I had to go through the morgue to get to my bedroom. Oh my. Man. It's kind of like starting life backwards. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's amazing. Hey, now, Phyllis, well, when, did, when did you first realize that you got bit by the bug? Uh, just coming out, I went to the Pasadena Playhouse at night and worked during the day. So, But I was so shy, I was scared to go on stage. And finally got the chance to go on television. So, Do you remember the first production you were in, the, the, your first chance uh, kind of to be in front of other people? and uh, I mean, that, that kind of feeling you had, do you remember that first uh, the first time? scared to death. I, I uh, was actually worked as a dancer extra on some little show and somebody saw me in, at Universal and um, it got me, managed me and got me in a movie called Lord Love a Duck. And I knew nothing. I mean, as soon as he says, okay, I'd start talking. They says, can you wait for action, please? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so cute. Embarrassed. No. <laughs> Uh, but that was my first job Say, ever. Say, you know, I'm going to jump just a little bit. Were you in this this picture? I, I forgot the title of it. It's something about, let's see, the one that was selling in an old movie with you. Terminal Island. Terminal Island. Oh, my God. Was that the <laughs> one he was selling in that movie? He was in that movie, and they hired him because he was gorgeous. They wouldn't let him talk. Oh, how funny. So he, is that because no he sounded line. like Mickey Mouse? <laughs> he did sound like sounded like Mickey Mouse when he started. He sounded I, like I, Mickey Mouse. They hired him, though, because he was so pretty. Yeah. So, yeah, so it was fun. It was, you know, one of these B-rated movies where the girls beat up the guys. I and, like um, that. <laughs> I do, too. I love it. <laughs> I know. I know. So, oh, but it, it was fun to do. It was just, you know... So what was the, what was your claim to fame? I mean, what, was it George Slaughter who found you and, and cattle poked you? No, it was it, was, it wasn't it, a uh, candy spelling or love American oh, style. Well, I did let, let, uh, love American style, and that was a fluke. I'd gone into Paramount to I just gone shopping, and I wanted to show somebody my new bathing suit, and they said, "Oh, we're casting," and they'd seen two hundred girls. I walked in with my new bathing suit, and the bathing suit won. <laughs> I got the job. Wow. No, no, honey, you won. Well, yeah. I won. Yeah. You sure did. Wow. Um, before that, you did Wow Wow West with Robert Conrad? Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I... Don't tell Bob that. <laughs> well, you know, Bob, Bob does a show on this network. He does? Yeah, Bob's on on Thursday. In fact, it's too bad he's not here now. He'd... He'd be all over the radio. Oh, no. I, yeah, I, I, did, I only had a few lines on that job. Yeah. But it, it, was, it was okay. <laughs> okay, here's, fellas, here's the ultimate question. Did you or yeah. did you not marry Larry on Magnum? Oh, my God, I married Larry. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you, we did? I, did I? We got, did we well, get married? 
Well, we went to the altar, and then they cut. So I don't know. <laughs> no, they... I don't know if we did it. Did they? What, what I didn't did they answer learn? you, dingbat. They said... Well, I don't well, remember. Well, they, they <laughs> said, that's what they do. Do you accept this wife, or uh, this woman is your wife? And I went, uh, and that was it. It was a cut. Yeah, they cut it. But we were supposed to do another, like, movie of the week or something that we all came back. Yeah, what I happened? know. Well, we were supposed to do some another magnum, but that, you know, that, that and Santa Claus is coming is the same thing. It never happened, and it probably never will. So, yeah. But, folks, you know what? To tell you the truth, I don't know if we really got married or not. So, I don't either. I loved my gown, but other than that. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah, that was pretty. Yeah. Well, now, Phyllis, every, Phyllis, everything I've ever seen you in, you were always cast as, like, this bombshell. You know, the the woman, I mean, you know, I remember you in Knight Rider. You were kind of, like, this nefarious, uh, you, you really got David Hasselhoff, uh, Michael Knight, to kind of fall into you, and you turn around and betrayed him. I mean, you always played that kind of character where you're a bombshell, complicated bombshell. Uh, did you ever feel like maybe you were a little bit typecast in that sense, or, or did you ever get that feeling? I had a feeling my boobs were too big. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm glad you brought that up because speaking of boobs, I want to ask you a question. Do you yeah. remember? Do you remember when you were in Hawaii and and we were doing one of your episodes, and I brought you over to see Tony Curtis? Oh my God! Do you remember? <laughs> yes, and you didn't tell me that was his paintings, and I'm almost was so rude. Oh, you mean and about was, the painting? Yeah, she. We yeah, go in Tony Curtis's house, and he's in there painting uh, his paintings, and there's paintings all over the floor. And she goes, "Oh, what are these paintings?" I said, "They're here. Shut up." <laughs> but <laughs> no, but, God. But is yeah. this is this story true? He told me that while yeah. you guys were doing Vegas, he went to the wardrobe department and told the girl to give you a bigger brazier every week. <laughs> Is that true? Until well, that had to cost him a bloody fortune because uh, I would they would make me fly in and be refitted, and I was I thought I was losing my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> it is true. Yes, <laughs> it is true. Yes. And and they would and Nolan Miller was the uh, designer, and he'd say, "I don't understand this," <laughs> and every and they'd have to build another one. And then they would get it would get too big again. So it did cost so, them a fortune. Well, Tony didn't care what it cost. Oh, I know, I know, but um, I like Tony. Oh, uh, Tony nice. Curtis was uh, probably one of the greatest act actors of our yeah, time. Yeah, he was super. He was guy. very nice to me. Yes, good friend. They were rude to him. They'd always forget him. The the I don't know the people that's supposed to pick you up, and he'd be standing at the airport, and nobody would oh, pick him up. Oh my oh, God! So disorganized. <laughs> I know it. How stupid! Oh, so hey, irritated. Phyllis, yeah. hang in there. We're going to go to a commercial break, but we're coming right back. We want to talk with you a little bit more. Is that okay? Sure, that's fine. Great, hang in there, Phyllis. CRN listeners, be sure we got one line open right now, 800-336-2225, 800-336-2225. If you want to get your questions into Phyllis Davis, if you want to talk to Larry or Nancy Minetti, or ask Will Link a question about the movies, be sure to give us a call at 800-336-2225. We'll be back right after this.